hardly anyone's on feet. What makes young people afraid to rage? I'm curious what makes you so curious. What makes you so curious? What makes you so curious? In the beginning was the beat. Welcome to the Rave Curious Podcast. I'm your host, Joshua Glazer. What are we curious about? We're curious about electronic music and the culture that surrounds it. And how do we want to satisfy that curiosity? Uh, we do it by talking to some of the people who have dedicated their lives to electronic music, the DJs, producers, promoters, and more. My guest today on the Rave Curious Podcast is Tony Childs, a.k.a. Surgeon, uh, one of the great techno talents to come out of the U.K., I sat down with Surgeon and his new musical colleague, Starlight, um, who is probably best known as the tour partner slash opening act slash muse for Lady Gaga. That's right. Uh, hard techno and Lady Gaga t- on today's Rave Curious podcast. And, and how does something like that even happen? Um quick version of the story, and I think we actually get into this in more detail in the conversation itself, but Starlight uh, is a big fan of hard techno. Uh, Lady Gaga was performing in Birmingham, England. Tony happened to go to the show, and Starlight happened to give him a shout-out from the stage, and they happened to connect, and now they're making music. And if you think that sounds bullshit, we recorded this podcast inside Berghain, uh, where Surgeon and Starlight had just finished performing. It wasn't just a regular Sunday afternoon. Yeah, that's right. Sunday afternoon at Berghain. It was actually Christopher Street Day, which is Pride Weekend uh, in Berlin. So doesn't get much more legit than uh, techno at Berghain during Pride Weekend. Uh, we actually sat down in the offices upstairs in the Berghain building um, a surprisingly nice office, actually the the probably the nicest nightclub office I've ever been in. Uh, not what you would necessarily expect uh, from Bergheim, but then again, you'd expect no less. The recording of this was a little tricky, as obviously when you have a giant Function One sound system banging hard techno uh, in a giant former East German power plant. You're going to get some rumble that's on the recording. There was nothing we could do about it. And then to double the problem, uh, we had a recorder trouble. So the first half of this conversation was done on my nice professional recording setup. The second half was done on my iPhone. So we did what we could to make it clean, um, make it sound good for you. I think you can at least understand what everyone is saying. And you know what? You're listening inside of Berghain, which is something that nobody gets to do um, unless you wait in line for two hours and are lucky enough to be allowed in. So so that's what's happening this week on the Rave Curious Podcast. Uh, be sure to follow us, uh, Facebook or Twitter, Rave Curious Podcast, um, or, or subscribe on iTunes. And here we go. It's the Rave Curious Podcast with Surgeon and Starlight. Enjoy. <laughs> Right now we are, for, for those listening, um, we're here with, with Surgeon and Starlight, and we are actually inside Bergheim in Berlin right now, but we're not supposed to tell anybody. Yeah. No, nah, I think it's all right. I think it's all right. I think we can tell. We can tell. We're in the office, obviously, upstairs. Um, this is great. Do you see this? The, um, it's like it's a gingerbread house. Gingerbread Bergheim. Which I showed my, uh, my, when we came up here to drop off, this is my girlfriend's like, I want to take a picture. I'm like, there's no pictures in Bergheim. It's like, I really want to take a picture of that. I'm like, there's no pictures in Bergheim. Then I remember there's, there's actually a picture of it on their Facebook page. So it's actually not Because this technically is not actually Bergheim, so. I think we are technically, um, we're technically the, Ostgut, we're the offices of Ostgut, the record label that is coincidentally. So Tony, did you, have you put out stuff on Ostgut? Or you just had this relationship with them? I did a remix. I did a remix for Shed some years back um, on Osgood, but uh, I think that's the only it's okay. thing. Yeah, that's the only thing I've, I've done. Uh, my only relation with the okay. label. Yeah, it's definitely been more so with the club. Yeah, and that's been going on probably, I imagine, since it began or even before it began. 
Yeah, I mean, the first thing was uh, when I when I used to play every month at Trezor, uh, Pete and I would um, we would play all night, but that meant we wouldn't get to hang out because one of us was always playing. So at the end of the night, uh, we'd be pretty drunk, and then we'd like go on to Ostgood and hang out and drink some more. And so that was kind of a, like a regular. We do that every time, basically. Right. So that's how I kind of knew of Os, the the old location of Ostgood. Right, and Oscar was the, the Bergheim before Bergheim. Like yeah, the, the previous location, of, mm-hmm. but the same people. So. Right, right. And then, so it's, it's interesting because I think this would have been early 2000s or even earlier in the 90s? Yeah, late, yeah, late 90s, 90, maybe 98, 99, okay. around about there. So, so it's kind of always had that 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 vibe of like it's where everyone it's where everybody comes after whatever else is yeah, going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the uh, yeah, it's, it's one of one of the after after. At, at this point, all the afters are afters. Yeah, yeah. Most yeah, people yeah. don't even go out till Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Oh my after party is on Wednesday. <laughs> that's that's underground. <laughs> that's that's underground. That's what I'm gonna ask. What I think should happen. So and, and after party on, on Thursday for the weekend before. <laughs> yeah, which, at which point does the after party become the pre party? Hmm, that is the question. <laughs> it, all, it all blurs into one, doesn't it? Well, I think the, like the, the, the TV schedules, like the new day starts at 6 a.m. Yes. Like if you look at like TV Guide back in the day, so that's, that's maybe when the after okay. party becomes the pre party. 6 a.m. Okay. So, so and you, have you been here before? I have actually not been to Birmingham before. This is my first time. Wow. Did it live up to uh... oh, beyond? Like it's just such a like the. I mean, it's such an honor to play here. It's like beyond my wildest dreams of when I could have you know started making techno. That I mean, it's always been it's it's like the dream, you know. And sure. it's just like my life is so crazy that it's like oh wow well. That happened faster than I thought. Whoa! <laughs> Here's everything so, you ever wanted. Oh, wow. you can with that then. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I guess I better get uh, prepared for this. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, it's already happening. Okay, go now. Too late. Too late. <laughs> no preparation. See to my pants. That's yeah. The lady Starlight story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you guys, so how, but how long have you got? I mean, how long have you been making tech now? Because I mean, Tony obviously everyone knows it's been doing forever. Like, being fully and completely honest, I programmed my first drum machine six weeks before uh, I had, I lied, two weeks before I had a gig, I had a gig at South by Southwest. Which one? With my friend. With my friend, Lady Gaga, <laughs> had me open, and I was like, uh, I want to do this. Not not having anything ready I was like but I'm gonna do it and I just made it happen so I literally did not sleep I took Adderall and just did it it was 24 hours a day Adderall so, Adderall Techno Adderall yeah. Techno that it, used to be, it used to be Ketamine House now it's uh, Adderall Techno yeah. I love it yes Yes, that's what I do. <laughs> so so what, what, what were you doing before? I mean, you've, you've obviously you've been in music for a long time. <laughs> I've had like a really varied, um, varied career. And I started, I actually have, uh, my first DJing was actually 70s glam rock. And that was the first genre that I started collecting. Um, you know, it was mainly not as much of a DJ as really a record collector. And a selectress, as they say. So, um just nerdy record collecting and like started collecting glam and then um, eventually sort of transitioned into metal, which was not something I was a fan of as a teenager, which was very odd, like 30, when you're 30, you're like, yeah, metal. It's like really, I don't think I have met anybody who's had that story. You started liking metal in their 30s. I'm like, oh, I guess. Did you you, you start smoking when you were 31? (laughs) (laughs) I started smoking pot at, at 36. <laughs> no, unfortunately that. <laughs> but um, I, pretty much. And so, um, so DJ metal, um, and then it's about really, like. You did some really big, big tours. Yeah. With the metal stuff, you know? I think I DJed, I was the opening DJ for Judas Priest's North American tour and UK tour. And like I went into like Ukraine and Russia with them, which was. Oh, man. Everything. Like, <laughs> I know that, you know, 
Russia's government is, is appalling, but the people really are amazing. So, um, so that was great. And also DJ like, um, for Iron Maiden at their actual like personal party, like talk about anxiety and pressure. That's sort of how it was like this kind of like, you know, performing at Ber Bergheim for the first time. Oh, I was like, I just kind of remember that. I was like, oh right, I did actually DJ for my favorite, for my favorite band. No pressure or right. anything. <laughs> like if they didn't like me, you so will make sad. these things happen. <laughs> it, it is your fault. You know? It is totally your fault. I think fault. I figured this out. So, so, so Tony's just bringing you to Bergheim, expect, <laughs> hoping that you will then <laughs> introduce him to. Made it, made it. No, I haven't. I have not successfully convinced Tony to see the no, I'm not, of heavy I'm not, metal. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really feeling the metal. That's, that's okay. That's okay. I've tried. It doesn't work. <laughs> but like, I, thought, I thought you were a metal guy. No, no more like, no. A, like a goth. Not really, no. What's your deal, man? What's your story? What's my deal? What are you into? Sim actually, a, a lot, lot funny. Uh, yeah. A whole lot of stuff. And you know, the, the funny thing is that I can, and this is kind of part of the, amu an amusing part of the story, really. I can see that from the outside, people are like, what the fuck is going on? What, what is, Tony's lost his mind again. <laughs> um, but you know, from, I don't know, everything that Colleen's been involved with just make it makes sense to me. I, I understand how it fits together in my rambling head. And you know, um, when we met, it, I don't know, uh, there was just this instant connection and it really was like... We hugged. I've, we I've, hugged. I found, you know, I found someone from the planet <laughs> I'm from. You know, that's, that's what it felt, that's the only way I can describe it. It's like being on Earth, being an alien on Earth and meeting someone and going, oh my God, you're from the same yeah, planet. Yeah, it's you. You, you know, <laughs> and it was like instant <laughs> for both of us. And it was just, just, I know. So all of that stuff just makes sense to me. Yeah. You know, all the different, from the outside it could seem like, well, what's all this weird random stuff and where does techno fit in? But it just makes sense to me. I know. It really does. Yeah. We have to adjust the fact that it doesn't make sense to other people. Like, yeah. But, I mean, we're from the same planet. We're from the same planet. planet. Yeah. That's, that should that, be enough. Of course we're going to yeah. work yeah. together. Are you kidding me? Well, it feels like all these things are kind of collapsing anyways. The, the genre lines yeah. and the... I mean, you know, I... They should. I'm sure... I don't know. I've always loved so many different kinds of music on different levels and to me that's always been really normal and I'm I find it weird when someone isn't doesn't feel like that about music really and yeah. I don't know so, so what is the story how did you two first <laughs> that, that, <laughs> famous story well, that was quite bizarre so um, my my wife and I went to uh, we got tickets for a Lady Gaga concert that was in Birmingham um, and you know, so the sort of backstory on that, you know, I um, I'm always really fascinated, almost from quite a technical point of view. I really, I really love going to see great performers, even when I don't know that much about them. Say, you know, I like I can go to a, a concert and, and just just enjoy on quite a technical level how they how they're connecting with the crowd and how they're projecting and that kind of thing. And really, you know, that's what that's what I kind of went to that concert. Uh, that's the way I went to that concert. You know, um, I wasn't really that familiar with much of uh, Lady Gaga's music, but you know, some of it. And uh, so we were there, and the uh, I think Breed Love played. We got there when he was playing, and then and then Colleen comes out on stage, and I'm well, I'm confused. So. Who, is that what's going on? Is that Lady Gaga? What's yes. happening? I'm yeah, really, so like, yeah, it happens a lot. We do like standing <laughs> in the middle of this this like uh, uh, walkway thing, and she's got these drum machines, and, she, and then she starts playing techno. It's like, what is happening? But this is Forget not about the dirndl that I was wearing. Oh yeah, dirndl and Timberland boots. I gotta be. I have no idea what a dirndl is. One of those, uh, like, like Austrian, a, uh, 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 German. <laughs> You know, like Oktoberfest. Oh, like a like a later yeah. No, 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 but, no, 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 no. Oh, the woman. Yeah, okay, the dress, it's called the a dirndl. A dirndl. A dirndl. Okay. And I got it here in Berlin, actually. Mm -hmm. So you don't see those often in Berlin. 
Actually, we're going to do Oktoberfest here. Everywhere at the vintage stores. If ah. you go, it's like there's like the wall of traditional German garments. And I'm like, well, I don't care about this. That is what I'm after. <laughs> so so Col- so so I'm confused. Colleen starts playing techno and this is like raw <laughs> From the machines, you know, a drum machine and a, and an kind of acid line techno. This isn't like some lame techno. It's like old school raw techno, and I'm totally, I'm thoroughly confused. What? <laughs> this is not what I expected to happen at a Lady Gaga concert. What? The crowd's a little like, uh, what? Hey, What's happening? Hey, yeah. I'm really confused. And then, and, then, and then she gets on the mic and says. What it's something like? Um, oh, I'm really happy to be in Bur- to be playing in Birmingham today because one of because my favourite techno producer is from here. Artist. I always say techno oh, artist. My favourite techno artist surgeon, surgeon is from here. So what? I'm like, what the? <laughs> At this point, you're like, like, what's in my, what was in my drink? Oh, <laughs> yeah, what? Who, who spied me with like ten acid trips? You know, it was just like, what? where's the hidden camera? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I was like, like, I didn't mean. <laughs> and then she says, and then she says, if you're out there, call me. And gives this really weird, uh, way to like, like thirty digits. <laughs> And that's where the recorder died. Uh, it was probably turned off for about three minutes before anyone noticed. Um, and like I said at the beginning, we had to switch to my iPhone, which I will readily admit does not sound as good. But you made it this far. Uh, we're just gonna keep going back to a Rave Curious podcast with Surgeon and Starlight. Recorded inside a Bergheim. All right, we'll just keep going. Yeah, I know it was on three minutes. Ago. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, uh, the whole, uh, and then then we did a Paris show together because 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 Gaga was so crazy about it. She's like, oh, you you guys have to play the last day of the tour. Um, it's like on streamed on Yahoo or something like that. And we were like, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Um, but you should say what you said about the mirror thing, because that probably didn't get right. The mirror thing. Oh, the mirror thing. thing about yeah, the yeah. So, so, so it's like, um, yeah, like I said, um, you know, from my side, I, it was just instinct. It's like I have this has to happen. I have to do this. Um, there was no thought about oh, what can I get out of it? Oh, my career. You know, honestly, my. Career is the last thing I blatantly my things about. Me too. You know, I'm like, oh yeah. Oh, maybe I just fucked well. it all up. Oh well. Uh, it was fun while it lasted. But um, you know, so it was just interesting. It's like this has to happen. This is so bizarre and absurd. I love it. It's got to happen. If it's the end of it all, that's you went out. You know, went out with you know, wagging old women. So, and then you know, and then thinking about afterwards. Uh, you know, I, I felt like it was such a shock for people that it was like holding a mirror to their face, and it was their, uh, people's reactions were said more about them than about the situation that happened. It, you know, it's some kind of weird. It was just all a weird social experiment, really, yeah. wasn't it? And it, it was, was like, like people were just. I mean, I think only you know Tony can get away with doing that. There's no way that. Um, like any other artist could actually get away with because, you know, you totally never, ever, yeah, and you feel like, oh, we still have to do it, I'm just going to do what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clearly never concerned about money or whatever. It's like, yeah, I don't know. And, so, and, looking, look, and looking at it afterwards, I guess it's about just, you know, I'm, I'm very uh, comfortable in my own skin with what I do and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I feel sure and certain about how I, uh, you know, how I perform and stuff. So doing something like that isn't gonna, isn't gonna fuck it up. <laughs> but I, uh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> like, oh wow, people are really feeling strongly about this. Yeah. And we could no, yeah, be like, ah, no, we're it's, like performing it's in the bedroom of, or whatever. I don't know. It's kind of, it's, it's kind of beside the point, and I don't pay a whole lot of attention to it. Really, you know, I know if I, the way I approach. You know my what I do. You know if I if I feel like it's the right thing to do, and I'm approaching it in a, a very pure way, then that's the right way. That's, that's always going to be the right way to decide what to do. And I 
And that's where, that's where we connect, because it's the same thing. So yeah, we like, like very like pure like and alien, and, and, and all the, all all the other stuff just, just <laughs> comes, comes afterwards, and you, you think about it afterwards as well, you're like, oh yeah. Uh, well, but it's very yeah. good at that point, because I know, like, I, mean, I wasn't at that point 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah. You guys yeah. weren't at that point. No, no, no. Younger. It takes, yeah. it, it takes time to get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, would you, I mean, would you think, like, if, if you told, like, you know, like, you know, 25 year old tell me that, like, the first thing that's great, 25 year old told me what a Lady Gaga is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you'd have told me like last year, no, yeah, last year, I'd have been like, what? <laughs> You're like, okay, what? Well, yeah, this fans out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it, yeah, I it's just back to I just this is just the most absurd thing, and I love the absurd, so it, there's no question about it uh, that that has to happen. And the thing is, uh, you know, that was my first experience of. Uh, backstage at a, at a big pop tour, you know, and, and the thing that really struck me was how really, really positive everyone was. There was such a great atmosphere backstage, you know, and often, you know, what you see is like the performance out front, you know, everyone smiles and stuff, but backstage everyone's like crying <laughs> and, and then like wants to kill themselves and like getting high to block it all out and stuff. But, but you know, that's what, that was the the best thing for me to see how how positive and passionate everyone was and it, it really it surprised me and it really put things into context with you know the techno scene and everything like that you know and it really it was it was really great to see that it was so such a positive passionate uh, you know crew backstage everyone just really just loving what they were doing and, and this was the end of a how many months yeah. world tour how many it wasn't so much length as it was like um, it was lo- it was long. long. We didn't um, take a break at all. Like between um, Australia, the Middle East, and Europe, we basically had a total of maybe ten days in between all of those. Wow. Oh, sorry, I forgot Japan. <laughs> oh, so I would have oh, expected them sorry. to be flying more. <laughs> Japan, you know, Korea, Korea and then so <laughs> really. It was really, yeah, just so positive. I was really overwhelmed by that and how, you know, I could tell, she, you know, everyone must be treated really well because they're, everyone's too happy. It's great. Really nice to see that. Well, when you have the resources, when something's big enough, then everyone can kind of... Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I guess it just shows that people are treated well, you know. It's not like, you know, the, the star gets everything and everyone else is just like eating yeah, porridge or that's something, you know. Like, tour. Yeah, so you know, I had no idea what to expect, but I was it was it was it was great to see that. So so much positivity and passion backstage. Okay. And have you have you done other tours? Like you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh all the fun ladies I got to make one of my you know, right, right, right. Sure. Yeah, exactly. So really the only person that we just go, she's like, Oh there you go. She's she's like a really good person, genuinely, and she just wants me to succeed. And many other female artists would not do that to their female friends. So that just says it says a lot about her. Do you think that's a female thing? I no, I just think that um I think it's difficult in the entertainment industry. It is very, um, there isn't a lot of uh, room. There, it, it does feel like a finite amount of room for women. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't believe that at all, but I can understand where other people think that. I'm very supportive of women. I like to work with women. You know, like By all. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, girl. <laughs> but like, um, in. Uh, like authorities, like manager, agent, like I prefer to work with women, um, and as like authority figure, which is you know what most, most women don't like that, they, you know. So I feel very, um, I guess I'm a feminist in a way, and I, I don't post feminist, but I um, I I think about um, you know young women don't have a lot of role models for techno. You know, and um, they don't have, and you know, there's always, you know, I'm not afraid to like look ugly and crazy, and like 
I hope that, you know, that would help. I'm very interested in helping young women feel good about themselves. So I'm hoping, you know, that's another great thing that I see um, that it'd be great, you know, something to a really great result that could happen, you know, because mm. there really aren't that many uh, females in models. Yeah. Where do you think that comes from, your, your desire to do that? Was it something you grew up with? Like, Yes, I had a difficult time, you know, growing up, and it's, I want to save people from that. <laughs> and I'm just always like, it's such a difficult time. And it's just, you know, it's really crucial that teenage, early teenage years it really um, defines, um, you know, how you, what you become as a woman and how you sort of, uh, you know, react to things and uh, your, your expectations and your goals. And it's just a really formative time. And there's nothing meaner than a teenage girl. <laughs> I, I, I just, I, I, I don't where I kind of became aware of this oh, somewhat recently. Oh, absolutely correct. And with, that's the best thing about my, uh, like, having um, the Lady Gaga audience, is that first of all, I can, because she's my friend and she loves me, she lets me do whatever I want. Like, the tour before, I did, like, performance art to progressive rock. <laughs> oh, did I forget to mention that one? <laughs> oh, yeah. I love prog rock. That's, like, the best of everything. So I did that, and that went over like a lead zeppelin. <laughs> that was like, uh, I mean, I knew that people would hate it, but I did it anyway. Again, like to destroy my career seems like my goal or something. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that. I'm gonna, you, got an, you got an award for that, didn't you? Yes, actually, in Australia, I got, I was the worst opening act ever. Ever? Ever. Yeah, ever. Wow. Uh, uh, who, 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 Showed this, this honor upon you. It was like, the authority. I, you know, I have to find it. It was something like some. I mean, it I was looked, big, it. Which one was it? I don't remember, but it was it was good. That's quite. It was a big know, publication in all time. That's that's like in the review of. I mean, the history of opening acts. Yeah. Ever. Nothing. Nobody. Nothing was, before. Nothing after. Where, 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 where do you want? How many people do you have? Yeah, just kind of like, like did like traveling minstrels. Did minstrels yeah. have to oh. that? I don't, I don't know what exactly the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Or are we just talking about yeah, the other context? The, 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 the post rock and you know from the, rock and roll onwards. Yeah, perhaps. Uh, pretty good though. I think that they used to do local bands as a way to. I know that that's changed. Yeah. That you'd have like a local opener yeah. for the big sure. end. We should go back to that. But then you go to, uh, I don't know, they're not going to do all the horrible, like, <laughs> yeah, they're like, hey, ooh, uh, like, give them a shot. I was quite, I was quite an award. Again. Yeah, number one, no one is worse than me. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, but now, you've come to a better, you've gone to a better place. <laughs> Well, that's a pretty good place. I'm okay with that place. <laughs> I don't think it is. People loving you and hating you is exactly the same thing. It's the same be, thing. So. You, you are both the best and worst person to ever perform with Tony ever high up this street day. In 2015. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. I, number one. Number one. With a bullet. So how long have you guys been doing this thing? Was it, I mean, you did Amsterdam last night, or that was just, Tony, you just played Amsterdam? We, so we did the two, we did the two, we did the Birmingham and the Paris uh, Gaga tour day, and then we played, uh, we played at Ministry of Sound in, yeah. in, in London. Mm -hmm. was that, that, that was last, like, month. a month ago, yeah. Yeah, a month ago. Um, so this is the, this is the fourth yeah. one. Yeah, fourth one. Yeah, and we've got, we've got, like, a bunch more lined up in, Holland, Belgium, Paris again. Oh yeah, pa oh, Paris. Again. Return, Paris. <laughs> the return, the grand return. But without, uh, and then live stream, which is nice. <laughs> oh yeah, and, uh, <laughs> Czech Republic. There's some yeah. big weird brave there. Oh, it's in the park. Then. In the park in uh, festival. In That's in Scotland. Yeah, in two weeks. Okay. okay. Yeah, so there's a bunch more lined up, but it's um, yeah, it's it's funny how we kind of realize that people are still 
I mean, from our side, it, it just makes perfect sense on our, on our planet. But um, I can still see how some people are still a little confused. But, you know, that, that confu- I don't know, confusing people is, is, um, can be a powerful... Confusion is a powerful no. emotion, and that's sure. really good with that. No, I'm not a singer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, he just uh, so like vocal, like vocal. Yeah, maybe he got out of girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. If Tony ever does something, that involves. I think it was more incredible if you guys came out and you were turning up here and you would just turn I'll go, go, go. Yeah, I'll go. That will be the worst thing ever. Actually, you're right. We would win. I'm a horrible guy. <laughs> Even better. I am a horrible The worst, the better. better. <laughs> you would like to strap on mic like the, the yeah. country mic and yeah, you yeah, want yeah. to. Like the spinach pedo. Oh no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't it's happening. Don't 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 make it's happening. You heard it here first. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Also, so are you guys going to stick around? Do you have to... Oh, no, I'm going to hang out. The party. I'm so happy to be here. I'm like, oh, good. I don't have to wait in the line, so oh, you yeah. better believe I'm going to hang out. <laughs> You're in, so make I know, I'm like, I got in, I got in. <laughs> yeah. I will not squander the opportunity. It's funny, I brought my, my, my girlfriend's here, and it's her first time in Berlin. Mm. She just arrived last night, and she she knows something that she is, I don't know, she's very really curious. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's in her 30s, she just never, never got like close to it. And she's like, I'm like, do you, do you want to try this? And she, she's open to it. Good night. So we came, because I had all the equipment, they weren't going to let us to the front door, so the management met us at the side, brought us up here to the office, said everything else. Like, oh, nice, peaceful. And we're just like, okay. And then they, we go to the wind, and it's that door that goes right under the main dance floor. Yeah. yeah. So there was, there was none of the like, you know, the wing line, yeah. or the yeah. yeah. none of that build up. So the door flies open, smoke pours out, there's men in jock straps. <laughs> and I'm like, I love go, it. go, go! Like, oh. <laughs> that that is really, like, that is serious. It you might be everything. It made me think of, uh, yeah, well, I did the same thing today. It made me think of that scene, there's a scene in, uh, that film THX 1138, and they've been, there's this prison, and it's like a huge open area, as opposed to being a, an enclosed space, this prison, and they walk forever, and you know, you never get to the edge of it, so, so it becomes really claustrophobic, and they, but they managed to find a way out, and so they've been in this huge open space, and no one, there's like two people in there, and they open the door, and it's just like, corridor of people in, they're freaking out the foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that was your girlfriend's experience. Does <laughs> <laughs> she love it? That I think so. We yeah. were about half hour in. She looks like she goes, okay, hey, yeah. How many more times can we come here? Okay. Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah. Ah, you go and move to Berlin, I think. Yeah, seriously. You'd be like, wait, but I'm just going to. If I'm brutally, if I'm brutally honest, I'm going to I ask myself why I moved to Berlin. At the very point in time, it was about. <laughs> that was a very, very valid and justifiable good reason. So, but I think hopefully it seems to be getting better elsewhere. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, I mean, so you've been playing more. Like, are you, you know, as you have your certain yeah. circuit that you do. Mm-hmm. Uh, but are you picking up more like odd gigs? Like, have you been back to LA since that one time? Or? No. Um, there's a small issue with. Um, work visas and uh, things like that. So yeah, I haven't been over to the States for a long time uh, to, to, to perform. Um, uh, I've, been doing, I've been doing some gigs that are more like, uh, I don't know, experimental electronic, I would say, with a, an old synthesizer, like a live improvisation, and doing that with uh, visuals, and it's more in like uh, venues like the South Bank, South Bank Center in London, and cinema type venues or a seated thing with with um, a guy a friend of mine called Ali Wade doing the visuals. Uh, that's been really fun to you know, right right now I'm really enjoying doing these projects which uh, it's like something really far out of my comfort zone and just going, 
like you were saying, happy the drum machine. It's like, yeah, I'll do that. Um, so what am I going to do? Yeah, I'm going to figure it out. Okay, I'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> you no, know, I'm, I'm really enjoying that that liveness and improvisation and and uh, and just putting myself out there and not being afraid to make mistakes or or look ridiculous or whatever. You know, it's it's just like just push yourself out there. And, you know, it's, it's exhilarating and fun, and, and you learn a lot from it as well. I think instead of staying in a, a safe comfort zone, you're never gonna you're never gonna progress. No, you just gotta be. Yes, yeah, to be fair. But, 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 but no, all, I think I I I, I, really, I really believe that an audience wants to hear that. They want to hear an eye pushing themselves, and not yeah. just staying comfortable. You know, which is it's it's too easy to do that these days, and too you know. I just don't find that exciting at all. You know, I want to hear people like just, you know, just put going out there, really pushing, pushing themselves. That's what's exciting to me to hear. And it doesn't. It's not really about style or genre. It's just hearing someone pushing themselves, just going for it. Yeah, it's really exciting. And like just and and like seeing ugliness. Yeah, and hearing ugliness, it's like everything's so pristine, and that's the reason I wanted to make techno actually is because of you know the really the early stuff where things are fucked up, and you hear like well, you are or something, you know, wrong. It's just, and you're like dying being on the desk and you hear it, <laughs> <he's wrong. laughs> ready, but you know it has such a that's what is that's yeah. what it, it made me feel because you can uh, hear a person, and you don't just hear some production or. It, it feels like uh, human, and yes. that's what I don't feel from a lot of techno today. And it right. comes down to production, you know, just very simple. Yes, yeah, realizing the, 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 the really, the really thing. exciting thing is about the interaction between a, a human and a machine, and, and some uh, a lot of the time that the, yeah, the, 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 the human can almost become erased by by modern production, and it's that's one thing, you know, to be very sterile, but. Yeah, and yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. Like that's an aesthetic. And that's another yeah. aesthetic. It's like yeah. a futuristic aesthetic, and I get yeah. that. But yeah. I, uh, but for us, you know, the kind of thing, and yeah. especially in a performance context, it's great to hear. Oh, there's a human doing that. You know, it's like it's a little bit. Yeah, human. Yeah. Like, oh, it sounds like something went off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's yeah, human. It's yeah, human. yeah, yeah. 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 I'm trying to tell myself that. Yeah. yeah. Realized, but at the but it's yeah. At the time. Yeah. At the time, that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Living on the edge. I have to like, remember. Right. It, makes, it lets you know you're alive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, that's, you could describe it that way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I learned, I mean, not that I DJ a lot, but like, like, DJing, teaching about them, I was living in Los Angeles, and I remember at some point I was like, it's almost like you want to make every third or fourth mix a little jarring. Yeah. Because like, 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 otherwise people like, just kind of zone out when yeah. you get to remind people that there's something going on. Mm-hmm. And it's okay to uh, be a human. Yeah. That's that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay, everybody out there. You can be a human being. Good, you're all right. (laughs) We like other human beings, so everybody will like you. (laughs) So, yeah, maybe maybe we should do that. Yeah. (laughs) It's okay to be a human being. I love it. (laughs) So, yeah. Hopefully, you have something that's better. Hey, man, it's human. That's it for this episode of the Rave Curious Podcast. We'll be back in two weeks with more conversations with key players in the electronic music community. Uh, if you like what you heard on this podcast, let us know. You can give us a shout on Twitter at Rave Curious. You can also like us on Facebook, Rave Curious Podcast. And of course, subscribe on iTunes to make sure you never miss an episode. Uh, that's it. Thanks for listening.